Hi, welcome back to my channel, we're here with another Princess Connect video and today we'll be talking about combat mechanics. I'm Lucille, or Lace for short, and in this video I'll be talking about damage calculations, skill order, positioning, buffs and debuffs, all the mechanics surrounding these. This video will get a little bit dank and a little bit hard to digest, but if you do take the time to understand it, it will definitely help you with your combat strategies and tactics. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let me just throw out some general facts. In dungeon mode, Lunar Tower, which isn't available yet, event bosses, which also isn't available yet. If your team gets wiped out or the 1 minute 30 timer runs out, you lose. In both Battle and Princess Arena, if the time runs out, the defending team wins. Also, the defending team also gets a little bit of a buff. In main and event quests, the 1 minute 30 timer resets for each wave. If the timer runs out, then you will lose. After each wave, your characters will recover HP and TP based on their wave HP and TP recovery stat, but this only applies to the characters that were actually participating in the battle by the end of the round. So for example, in Dungeon, your characters who were not participating in the battle, they do not get the HP or TP recovery. TP bars typically have a maximum value of 1000 and generate TP upon inflicting damage, taking damage from enemies, defeating enemies, and TP battery skills. The rate at which you gain TP is based on your character's TP gain rate stat. What this means is that you actually need to think about your equipment a little bit more, so you can't just go slamming the next rank. Damage calculations. There are two types of damage. We got physical which is denoted by yellow text and magical which is denoted by purple text. Final damage for both are dictated by attack, defense, crit rate and crit damage. Physical attacks can miss, yes there is an accuracy versus evasion mechanic as well as blind afflictions, but magical attacks cannot. The exceptions for physical attacks missing are in the skills that have guaranteed hits such as Christina's UB where the attack is guaranteed to hit and also guaranteed to crit. It's pretty busted. There's also damage over time attacks such as poisons, burns, etc. that do not factor in defense and therefore can be treated as true damage. Last interesting point to remember is that your self damage is also based on your offensive stats. So for example, if your Yori decides to smack herself to get her the buff on her skill 1, then it might actually hurt a lot and you need to keep this in mind, so maybe you need heals to back it up or something. Skill orders. Skill use in this game isn't random nor is it time based. It's actually based on a predetermined loop or pattern and every character has a distinct set of initial actions which are followed by their own distinct initial loop. So for example, Akino starts off with skill 1 into skill 2 and then after that she loops with normal attack, normal attack, skill 1, normal attack, skill 2 and then that loops infinitely. If you use a union burst, it will interrupt the current action and after the UB has finished, the skill order will pick up from the next action in their attack. If your character is interrupted by CCs such as stuns, then the current action will completely stop. After they have recovered, their next action will be their next action I guess in their attack pattern, similar to the UB interruption. Positioning. You've probably noticed that you can't actually control where your characters go, so this is because there is actually a hidden range mechanic. The best I have is the spreadsheet to show you where your characters will go when you assign them to the team. It's pretty self-intuitive, the shorter their range, the closer to the front they are. Like, you'll also notice that there are range gaps. So, for example, if two units like Mifuyu and Ninon are only 5 units of distance apart, they are more susceptible to AoE if one of them gets targeted. In combat, skills and crowd control actually affect positions. Enemies that have been knocked back will attempt to walk back to their original position after they recover, whereas the pulled enemies will not attempt to do so. Should one of your characters get stunned whilst using a skill that temporarily changes their position, they won't attempt to return to their original position. For target selection on skills that attack based on the closest enemy, your character will select the closest enemy which kind of makes sense and sounds like it's working as intended. However, what's interesting is that sometimes when your characters are moving, some move faster than the others. So for example, my Makoto usually runs in front of my Nozomi. And if we have a look here, it's because they are so damn close together. And so my Makoto starts taking a beating. Buffs and debuffs. All buffs and debuffs aside from action and movement speed are stackable. Typically for the buffs that you cannot stack, these mechanics actually make it extremely important for your team composition because you should be building your teams around a particular damage type with their respective buffs and debuffs. So for example, I've got Makoto for physical debuff. I use Shiori for big physical DPS, but you could also use Suzuna for 
physical DPS. Or for magical damage, you've got Akari who does a magical attack buff for the team and Hatsune for big magical DPS, stuff like that, right? So yeah, it's just really important to make use of these synergies because because everything gets really hard really fast in this game. On barriers, barriers of the same type are not stackable. And so following the earlier principle, if they're not stackable, then they will overwrite. An interesting mechanic is that if you're able to actually completely negate the damage from an incoming attack that also debuffs, you'll also be able to negate the incoming debuff as well. So that was quite a lot of information, let's summarize. So base your team around the same damage type to take advantage of the synergies, physical for physical, magical for magical. Later on, this matters a little bit less, but especially in the state of the game now, it's very important. Stack your buffs and debuffs, but make sure you're not over stacking, especially on action and movement speech, which can't stack or over stack. Also, enemy defense cannot go below zero. Your characters all have a hidden range distance kind of statistic, which dictates their starting positions on the battlefield. Skills affect this position. Skill use is based on an initial pattern followed by a loop pattern, so, and every character's skill patterns are distinct. That brings me to the end of the video. If I've missed anything, drop it down in the comments. But otherwise, if you've enjoyed or benefited from this video, please like, comment, or subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. It really goes a long way. As always, I appreciate you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.